Hi, I'm Luke Maxfield, the Fed School Coach. I'm a tutor for USMLE Step 2, 3, Comlex 1, 2, and 3. Today we're going to go through a question stem, and importantly, we're going to break down some methodologies for statistical analysis. This testing is something that comes up on all three levels, even some post-medical school in training or board exams, and it's something that unless you're exposed to a lot of research in undergraduate medical school or, for, or thereafter, uh, it's not something people understand well, and I personally became more involved with this and more passionate about it as I got further into research. So let's break this down together. A physician named Luke Maxfield is measuring the mean rate of cure between two groups being treated for gastric adenocarcinoma. The medication is a purine analog and has notable adverse events associated with nausea, hair loss, and peripheral neuropathy. If the investigator would like to compare the mean rate of resolution between the two groups, which statistical test should he use? So we're going to look at each one of these statistical tests individually. But first, we need to take a step back. We have to identify some of the terminology that's used with biostatisticians. So they have things categorized into categorical data, which includes nominal and ordinal variables. And then they have a different subset, which includes continuous and discrete variables. Now, as physicians, I feel like we use the words qualitative and quantitative more freely and easily. So for categorical vari variables, in your mind, just have that as synonymous with some sort of qualitative variable. So qualitative being that there's no unique number of value system ascribed to them. That would be other than just categories of groups. So a nominal variable is like nominal, like in a name. So it refers to a dog, cat, different categories that can be identified by nouns or just something as simple as yes or no. Ordinal variables have some sort of inherent value or order to them. For example, the staging of cancer, stage one, two, three, and four, they each have some inherent value, in this case, severity of disease that's attributed to them. But the numbers, stage one, two, three, and four, the numbers themselves actually don't have any value. They could be replaced by any sort of title to them, mild, modest, severe, ultra severe, so you see that they're not truly, it's not true, truly numerical or quantitative data. Those are actually just categories. The other subset of statistical data is quantitative variables. These include continuous and discrete. Continuous variables are any variable that has any value, such as height, weight, blood pressure, cholesterol. And this has an infinite number of decimal places just based off of the precision of measurement. Next one is a discrete variable. And this is any value that has a clear endpoint. So number of hospitalizations, number of treatments, number of patients with resolution. So examples of this would be number of treatments to get well from physical therapy or number of antibiotic doses for a patient has negative blood cultures. Ideally, these have a clear endpoint of being a whole number, such as 10 treatments, 20 treatments, 10 days. So tests for continuous or quantitative value, values these are the different tests that you use for quantitative data. So we have the t-test. This is something that we've all heard about and are familiar with from undergraduate or medical school, but it compares two groups that are one, independent, and also have a normal distribution. And this compares the means of the two groups of a continuous or quantitative variable. So for a t-test, remember you need to have three things. We're in the continuous, or the quantitative data. So you're gonna have some sort of quantitative or continuous variable. The two groups have to be independent from each other and you have to assume a normal distribution. There's different ways of arriving at a normal distribution. It's fairly complicated. You're not gonna be expected to know how to do it or definitely not expected to perform it on a test. But you should know the significance of it if they give you a statement saying that it is normally distributed. An ANOVA test compares the means of greater than or equal to three groups of a continuous variable. So this causes some confusion for test takers because a lot of times you'll just see more than three groups or greater than or equal to three groups and people go right to the ANOVA test. But the ANOVA test specifically refers to greater than or equal to three groups with continuous, remember quantitative variable being measured. You have to have both of those features present to use the ANOVA test. Next is a Mann-Whitney-U test, also called the Wilcoxon sign sum test. This is actually fairly prevalent. You'll see this in a lot of studies, especially a lot of smaller studies. This compares two independent groups of data, and this is regardless of the distribution. So remember, we said the t-test assumes normal distribution. The Mann-Whitney-U test can be used 
regardless of the distribution. And so it's often used empirically if the distribution cannot or is not going to be calculated. The last one here, you know, the Wilcoxon sign rank test, not to be confused with the sign sum test. So the Wilcoxon sign rank test compares paired groups, also regardless of the distribution. So a paired group as opposed to independent groups. Two independent groups, if you think of the most simple form, a control group, and then a separate subgroup of people who is getting a treatment. And you're looking at those two individuals. Now, a paired group can be someone who is on placebo and then transitions to the actual therapeutic group. So they can be, in effect, their own control group. But the outcome is effectively based off of the same person. So it's a paired group. They're comparing it to something within themselves. The qualitative tests, the qualitative values, are nominal and ordinal. With chi-squared tests, you're looking at nominal value variables or values and determining if they're associated. This is something you can see frequently for resolution rates. So did it resolve? Yes. Did it not resolve? No. So you're ending up with two different category, categories. For example, it can be an effect of treatment on disease. Did it, did it, was it effective? Was it not effective? Two different just categories. And then the Spearman test takes the two ordinal variables to determine an association. Remember the ordinal variables have, variables have some sort of intrinsic value. So looking at an interest level, whether it's high, medium, or low. And this can be used regardless of the distribution. Okay, back to our question. So we have the variable being measured is the mean rate of resolution. Now that can be confusing for some people because of the word mean. When you look at mean or think of averages, you're thinking of some value or number. But here, we're looking at the average rate of resolution. So it either is going to resolve or it's not. So when we look at this, let's break down two simple points. One, we have two groups. And the second part of this being that we have qualitative data, categorical data, because the resolution rate is either going to be the resolve or we didn't when we recorded the data. So let's plug this in with each of these answer choices and see how we do. So the ANOVA test, we know that that's greater than or equal to three with quantitative data. So it fails on both accords. The t-test can be used for two groups, but it's used for quantitative data. The chi-squared test can be used for at least two groups, and it's used for qualitative or categorical data. So that sounds great. The Mann-Whitney U is quantitative data, and the Wilcoxon sign rank test is quantitative data those differing on whether they're independent or paired groups. So that gives us our answer for chi-squared test. So looking at these questions, a quick way to do it again, we start with is the data categorical, and then we look at the number of groups. That's the fastest way that I've done to quickly go through some of your answer choices and eliminate some, if not eliminate all of them. And then if you've gotten that far, next thing you might have to do is looking at the distribution. In this case, with a chi-squared test, it didn't matter. You can use it for normally distributed material information or skewed, and then you can use it for independent or paired groups. So let's do this again. An investigator is measuring lactic acid concentration in diabetics at baseline and a control group of healthy individuals. The distribution is assumed to be skewed. The investigator would like to compare the means of two groups. Which statistical test should he use? So same thing. We have two groups, and we're looking at the mean lactic acid concentration. So this is quantitative data. So let's see how these tests hold up. And the ANOVA test, greater than or equal to three groups with quantitative data, failed on the first count. T-test, looking at two groups and quantitative data, that worked so far. Chi-square test. Two groups, great. Qualitative data, it's out. And then a man Whitney U, and the Wilcoxon sign rank test. Those are both two groups and quantitative data. So now we're going to have to go to our next step, which we said was going to be: Is this information skewed? So if it's skewed. We can't do the t-test. The t-test, again, relies on a normal distribution. 
So this is the normal bell curve distribution. And a skew can either be skewed left, where the bulk of the data falls left, or it can fall right, where it's skewed right, where the mean is skewed to the right, where the mean is skewed to the left, because of some large or small outliers. So we've eliminated the t-test now. The next question was, are these paired groups? Or are they unpaired groups? So the Man Whitney U test, we said, was for two independent groups. And the Cox and Sine Rank test was if, was if the groups were paired. So we said here we have two independent groups. So the Man Whitney U test is what we're going to go with. The same breakdown. Identify the variable, the qualitative, categorical, nominal, ordinal, or is it quantitative or continuous? This was quantitative. We had two groups which took us to the P test or Manuel Wilcox. We knew that this was going to be skewed data, took us to Manuel Wilcox. And then we knew that these were independent groups, which took us to the Manuel Whitney. All right, let's keep going. The more you practice this, the better it's going to be. An investigator is interested in determining if there is a difference in the average number of physician visits among patients who consume coffee, prunes, sugar free gummy bears, and Miralax. The distribution is assumed to be normal, and the investigator would like to compare the means of the groups. What statistical test should we use? So, same ladder. We have how many groups? Coffee, prunes, sugar free gummy bears, Miralax. Four groups. What's the data being evaluated? Means or the mean number of physician visits. So that's going to be recorded in the number. That's not categorical, so it's quantitative. So let's see. The ANOVA test is for greater than or equal to three groups of quantitative data. That looks good. The one tailed T test. So T test is for two groups with quantitative data. Chi square test is for greater than or equal to two groups with qualitative data or categorical data. The two tailed T test is two groups. So that's out. And then Wilcoxon we'll sign the rank test, two groups, and that's out. So here we've ended with the ANOVA test. We have continuous data, more than two groups, and then it's actually relevant there. We don't have to go further, whether it's skewed or paired or independent. So ANOVA does have multiple variations. You can do one way, two way, and we'll talk about the differences in those with one of the next questions. So a physician is identifying the amount of money reimbursed over a one year period. The average return is calculated for those who pay through private insurance and funds reimbursed by Medicare. The distribution is assumed to be normal. If the investigator would like to discern whether the return is higher through private insurance, which statistical test should be used? So same tree, we have two groups, average amount paid, so this is going to be quantitative data. And then another key point here, what's the goal of this study? We want to see if the return is going to be higher through private insurance. So we have two groups, and it was out, one tailed t-test, that's two groups in quantitative data, that's possible. High squared is two groups, greater than or equal to two groups with qualitative data. Two tailed t-test is two groups with quantitative data. And the Wilcoxon sign rank test, two groups, quantitative data. But one thing that's important here is that we're looking only at one end. We're not interested if the payment's higher or lower. He's only interested if the payment is higher. So a way to visualize this is here. If you're doing a two-tailed t-test, here on the left, we're interested to see if the payment is higher or lower. With a one-tailed t-test, we only want to see if the payment is higher or lower, but in this case, just higher. So that gives us our one-tailed t-test. Again, you can use the similar concept with ANOVA, a one-tailed ANOVA, two-tailed ANOVA. Last question, an investigator named Luke is measuring the mean cure rate between two groups being treated for cancer. If the investigator would like to compare the mean rate of resolution between biopsy proven precancerous lesions, well-differentiated cancer, and poorly differentiated cancers, which statistical test should he use? So same tree, we have one, two, three groups. And what is our thing that we're trying to identify? Again, the mean rate of cure. So the rate of cure, did it resolve? Is it cured or is it not? So this is qualitative data. So ANOVA, 
greater than or equal to three groups, but with quantitative data. T-test, two groups, quantitative data. S-squared test, greater than or equal to two groups with qualitative data. And then the man Whitney and Wilcoxon, two groups, quantitative. So the point of this one is that with the chi squared test, you can use it for more than two groups. Again, that's a common misconception is that if you have more than two groups, you need to use the ANOVA. If it's categorical, you can use the chi squared test. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. This gives you a nice introduction to some simple statistics. Hope you can implement it. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.